Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this video I will show you um, some tips and the process I've used to convert my high poly cliff tower model uh, to a mid poly model for Sketchfab rendering. Before we start I just would like to thank you all for your support and your uh, great feedback. And the good thing uh, about this is that I was featured on Blender Artist, 3D Total, and also on 3D Artist, and that this uh, artwork will be published and printed on issue 98 of 3D Artist. You can get your copy of the course by clicking the link in the middle of the screen here. And uh, this won't include the sketch file modification. That's what I'm I'm recording this free video because I was asked by one of my customer to uh, see if it was possible. And a lot of people are asking me if it can be turned to low poly. So actually the process was not really to get into uh, low poly, but with a few tips, you will have uh, the general idea. And this is also something I've covered in the um, shield creation. So you can uh, follow this link to find uh, the tutorial to the shield. My first step was to simplify some of the mesh because uh, it was built to be a high poly using the pointiness attribute. So I had to add some uh, geometry, but for those straight wooden parts, I could read, get rid of uh, most of the crossing edges and the crossing edge loop to get simple cubes or deformed cubes and keep nice UVs. So I've just uh, kept the curvy shape as they were, but all the straight shapes were uh, drastically reduced by removing all the edge loops. To make it faster, I'm slightly adding into selection mode using hard edge selection and then unselecting all uh, the curvy shapes. And then I just uh, get rid of all uh, the edge loop. Uh, for the stones, that was quite the same process, but it was a bit longer because some of the edges of the high poly model were quite beveled and it was uh, really hard to get a nice selection of those edge loops. So I mainly done this by hand, by creating a duplication of the original mesh to be able to then bake all the maps onto the low poly one. Once I was done with the, um, those uh, stones, those brick, I had to make a retopology of the base cliff which uh, was only a dynamic topology sculpting. So it didn't add any uh, topology or any UVs, uh, or maybe yeah, it had UVs, but it was a simple projection. So you couldn't turn around and have a good baking. Most of the shading was procedural. So I had to make a retopology. The cool thing about making a retopology for uh, Sketchfab export or for low poly export is that as soon as these are still and they won't be deformed, you don't really care about topology. So I've tried to add as many quads and nice loops as possible, but whenever I had to add a triangle, that was okay because this won't be deformed uh, by bones or by animation and um, there won't be any modifier that depends on uh, those shape like subdivisions also. So it was pretty straightforward. I tried to add uh, not too dense uh, geometry and try to keep those um, shapes, the main shapes uh, popping out of the cliff, not baking this onto a simple cube. So that was a pretty a fast process because the model wasn't that complex. Uh, I used the classical method using the using the snapping mode uh, with face and then just using the F2 add-on to work a little faster. Once done with this retopology, I just had to create my UVs, uh, putting the seams where I would, was needed, trying to 
uh, fit the creases because this is the point where it can be seen uh, easily and as it is for a low poly and again there won't be deformation this should be with the baking uh, we should get uh, a seamless result so it was mainly placing the seams on the creases and on the hard edges uh, to get uh, flat faces and an easy and wrapping once my uvs were done i was ready uh, to prepare the baking so i've added a new material to uh, my low poly model adding a texture and i've used uh, no cage at the beginning so i was simply using uh, the normal projection using the normal uh, size display to set it you can see those blue lines displaying the normal size uh, and it was a good way to set the ray distance but as I bake it I get some uh, artifacts on the baking the distance was not good so I decided to create a cage so it's simply duplicating your low poly mesh and inflate it so that it cover uh, the wall high poly because when baking normals uh, it takes in account the surface and project the ray inward uh, in the opposite direction of the normals. So by creating a cage, you can set the ray distance per uh, area. So I just move uh, the wall, uh, the wall geometry, inflate it a little, and then uh, see where I had some clipping and move them by n, so that I knew that those will bake a little better. Once you're done with this, in the baking menu, instead of using the ray distance, you can just click uh, cage, enable it at least, and then select the cage um, object. This outputs uh, better normals and better everything, even if I have few uh, here a few uh, artifacts because I have crossing geometries so I had to make some uh, settling here and also it, it didn't appear on the final model so that was fine so if you want more details again check out um, the shield the PBR shield creation where I'll cover all the baking etc in details and you will have the source file uh, freely if you want once done with baking the normals from the sculpt, I wanted to have also uh, the normals from uh, uh, the shader because I've used high level textures that you will learn to create in uh, the course and um, I wanted also to bake the ambient occlusion, to bake uh, the diffuse direct because I like to use it to give a sense of light direction directly bake into the texture instead of using uh, real-time uh, lighting so that's a technique that is used in very uh, with a very old engines or uh, on mobiles and, and stuff like this so that you can fake ray tracing in a way in your scene while it's just uh, pixels that are written directly onto the stone so here I've taken uh, the shader from the eye poly and just isolated uh, the diffuse color uh, the speculality and stuff like this and then just bake them using the same uh, method as before but instead of using the normals as an output I used uh, the emission color so that I could bake it with only five sample or even one sample and add um, add a, a grainless result because emission uh, shader doesn't need any sampling uh, to get uh, grainless. I've then quickly combined um, the generated uh, normals with our just baked normals from the iPoly model so that I had uh, general normals and I then just give a quick uh, test rendering test uh, to those texture uh, on the low poly model and you can see in the preview here that we get uh, quite a nice level of detail already. 
So as I explained before, in Photoshop, I combined the diffuse and the AO with the multiply, and also overlaid the diffuse direct pass, which given me um, a lightning um, properties to our texture, meaning that we can see shadow and light casted upon the object. And then when you uh, check it in shadeless mode, just texture mode, you feel like it's currently lighted. And then in Sketchfab or in whatever engine, the normals, glossiness, etc. will just allow you to add some uh, reflection that will increase this uh, filling of uh, high geometry and details. The process was repeated for the stones and you can see the result here in the preview on the right corner, which is not a random one. It's just a texture mode with shadeless, so we don't have any lightning information here and you can see that we have a sense of lightning already. So once you will add some uh, light information in your free engine, that's going to be pretty interesting to increase this effect. So I've kept going on baking those maps using the already created uh, UVs, trying to uh, simplify and move, or make some modification on the geometry that didn't fit well. And I have made some mistakes that can be uh, seen on the final uh, object in Sketchfab. If you turn around somewhere, you will see that some geometry is missing, but the general uh, picture is okay and also the ties I couldn't reduce the geometry from uh, this point because I was lazy first and uh, secondly they were uh, slightly curved so if I wanted to get a really good result I should have done a full retopology of those ties but I was really lazy about this because it was just about creating this short making of not something <laughs> more complicated. So then you just have to export uh, your object as an OBG and uh, optimize the map size for Sketchfab, then load it, enter your description and stuff like this and go into the 3D setting uh, to start working on the shading. I'm not yet really comfortable or still comfortable with uh, real-time rendering because I don't really get um, the difference between specularity, um, glossiness, metalness and stuff like this which is uh, quite specific even if you had a uh, visual feedback sometime. I mean I'm, I'm moving some values and didn't really get it. So, first thing I try to do is to uh, get the same, quite the same source of lightning that in the scene I've used to bake my textures. So that I can get casted shadows that fit quite well the one I've done. At the end I won't be using it, but I was testing. Uh, the most important thing here is to have your uh, overall lightning, so the HDR used. Uh, that won't kill your color. If you test the different HDR in Sketchfab, you will see that it will uh, drastically change uh, the ambience and the, the lightning of your scene and the color influence of the environment. So that's pretty important to test the different one and not to uh, test your shaders only on one and say, okay, the shaders are okay. Even if it's mostly about having good maps, so you will have to set them with Photoshop you know, or rework the labels or stuff like this to get a nice contrast. Um, if it doesn't work, I mean, if it doesn't look right, let's say, with a different kind of uh, environment lighting, it means that there is a problem. That's it. Once I was done with my uh, shading, let's say you can make some uh, post-production directly in Sketchfab, which is really awesome and works really great and will really enhance your uh, object. So this is also something you can see on my Amber Titan and a specific tutorial I have done or on, uh, is on my YouTube channel, so you will find it pretty easily, where I explain all of this. Here I just wanted to show you that some kind of a making of. I'm not diving into details, uh, it's just a 
15 minutes of quick explanation about this project and I will also make a short video on how I've made uh, the teaser for the product release because some of you asked for it and this is really a very simple trick <laughs> so I'll see you on uh, the next video coming soon